Good evening, everyone. This is day 475 of Russia's illegal war in Ukraine. Uh, this is Spartan News, and I am the Spartan. Um, I want to go over uh, a few things tonight with you. Uh, I don't think this will be a long broadcast. We'll, we'll see. Long stream. Um, first thing we're going to do is cover off uh, the losses of the last 24 hours that Russia has suffered in the conflict. Um, and then we're going to go over some really good news. Uh, U.S. aid package of $2.1 billion for Ukraine. And then we'll go into the map and cover off some uh, some interesting clips, news highlights, that sort of thing. A speech from uh, Vladimir Zelensky. Um, and that will be that. So uh, let's get started. First of all, the losses over the last 24 hours. Um, and again, Russia's not... Um, I know a lot of people have been anticipating that these numbers would absolutely skyrocket. I think one thing to understand, one thing to remember is that um, the it's it's a lot more difficult to attack than to defend. You need more troops and equipment to attack than defend. And um, losses typically are expected to be higher on the attacker because you're leaving cover, you're entering into a comfort zone that the enemy has had a chance to fortify, uh, learn, mine, et cetera, right? So um, I'm not really surprised that Russians, uh, Russia's losses haven't skyrocketed. Uh, they've kind of plateaued. And at the same time, too, it's been kind of obvious looking at the map and where Ukraine is probing um, that they have not um, gone force on force and basically committed all of their reserves, all, their, all of their... Um, tactical units to you know go at the strength of the russians and wipe them off off the map that sort of thing um they they look like they're going around um areas of strength trying to go around heavily entrenched areas that sort of thing so um it's maybe understandable uh why uh the russia's losses are kind of uh, plateaued um still in the grand scheme of things we've been desensitized to this these are horrendous losses for any military on the planet, but for this particular conflict, um, they are low to flat. We'll call it that. Um, so anyways, let's get into it. Uh, so troop losses for the past 24 hours is 470. That brings it up to 216,650. Uh, looks like we'll break 217,000 tomorrow's update. Uh, only six APVs, that brings it up to 7642. One helicopter, uh, 10 vehicles and fuel tanks. Uh, no cruise missiles. I was expecting some cruise missiles on this one. I'm pretty sure, I believe we'll see some for tomorrow. Um, four tanks, uh, getting close to the 4,000 mark. And again, these are ukrainian estimated but if you go over to oryx even oryx has got them well above 2000 so um horrendous tank losses uh one anti-aircraft warfare system 20 artillery pieces uh, double digit artillery pieces is just expected it's approaching 10 billion dollars worth of artillery pieces based on the, the you know the uh, estimated value of each piece that i put into this it's astounding, 10 billion. Um, one special equipment, two UAVs, uh, no boats, no MRS yesterday, and still sitting on one Kerch bridge. Uh, real quick look at the deep state map. And again, uh, deep state map is not as uh, aggressive as mine, if you want to call it that. Uh, they have, uh, I think, agreed to a 48 hour delay with the Rush, uh, Ukrainian Ministry of Defense. So anything that you're seeing here is typically uh, two days ago. And we know for, uh, I would say certain, uh, that uh, there's been some deep penetration here. Uh, three towns down, I believe, um, is, uh, is a safe bet. Um, and that is both from some Ukrainian frontline sources as well as Russians who have been um, stating online that they have either 
abandoned these towns. They've blown a dam. They're shelling uh, some of these towns in retreat, that sort of thing. So it's fairly safe to say that uh, these particular towns have been lost. But anyways, I do like Deep, Deep State's map because it gives you the ability to go back in time and look. And you can kind of see the progress. That's two days ago, one day ago, and today. So a little bit of shifting back and forth. Um, they're basically assuming that two days ago, the Russians pushed back in that one spot. Other than that, there's no real, uh, no real changes. If you go back a day and forward, um, this, uh, this piece here, I'll go down a little closer. It's just open, open land, a couple of little, uh, small bodies of water, little small lakes or whatever. Uh, it was blue, which was basically Ukrainian contested, and it switched to green, which is like basically Ukrainian confirmed. Uh, other than that, and and I can tell you right now, um, and it is not me get blowing any OPSEC or whatever, uh, there are Ukrainian sources, there are Russian sources, Prigozhin, etc., who have basically said that the Ukrainians have pushed... Um, a lot further in this particular flank now you do see a little bit of movement there not much but a little bit of movement a couple hundred meters maybe um but if you uh again aggregate all of the various sources both uh, uh russian ukrainian wagner etc um i think tomorrow's map update or the day after that you're going to see uh, some pretty good movement here, and maybe they're approaching Klitschkivka. We'll see. Um, anyway, so let's get over to the uh, the Pentagon's uh, latest aid package, the U.S. latest aid package. Um, this is kind of an interesting one. So it's valued at about $2.1 billion, and the full package includes, includes additional munitions for the NASAMs. Uh, no surprise there. I I can guarantee that NASAMS, Patriot, uh, Iris T, SAMP T, uh, etc. have been working overtime, taking out the caliber cruise missiles, the Shahid drones. They're not going to blow a really good missile on a Shahid drone unless it's the last resort. Patriots and, and the and the NASAMS, for example, the high ends, they're going to be going after the the uh, Iskanders. Um, the uh, caliber cruise missiles, possibly um, their uh, hypersonic missile, etc. The Kinzel uh, dagger. Uh, that's that's what those are being used for, and they're very expensive missiles. Uh, the Pack Three and the Pack Two. I think the Pack Three for the Patriot is, I think they're a million bucks a pop, if I remember correctly. They're they're high end. The NASAMs, I think, are a couple hundred thousand a pop, if I remember. But again, that's don't, don't quote me on that. But anyways, no surprise they need to be topped up. Stinger anti-aircraft systems. Uh, so I assume those are man pads and not the ones that are loaded onto the uh, Humvees. But additional uh, ammunition for the HIMARS. No surprise. Um, HIMARS have been working overtime as well. Uh, 155 and 105 millimeter artillery rounds, uh, 15 Bradleys. Uh, this is brilliant. It's, uh, first of all, it's great to see. Uh, the U.S. has uh, over 6,000 Bradleys in production. I recall doing a little bit of a deep dive, and I was thinking that there was around 2,000 plus that were still in kind of cold storage like um mothballed and uh no no plans to send anywhere so um what's hilarious about this is that the russians basically took that uh sort of day one of the offensive the, the recent offensive by the ukrainians where lost a handful of uh, bradleys and some leopards etc and the russians basically made days and days worth of news stories about all the Bradleys that they took out 13 15 percent of the Bradleys in country all that sort of stuff and then the U.S. pops up and says here you go level up put another put another quarter in the machine we'll give you those 15 right back uh they didn't even lose any strikers I don't believe I don't believe they've lost any strikers they were sitting at 90 
Uh, so they send another 10. So that, that uh, gets them up to uh that gets them up to 100 even i believe for strikers and if i remember correctly they went they had 113 bradleys they went down 13 up 15 so i'm thinking that they've got about 115 bradleys in country uh javelin anti-armor systems uh, we're all familiar with saint javelin uh tube launched optical um sorry tube launch optically tracked wire guided tow missiles that threw me off for a second the tracked part I, I wasn't i didn't have the track in my head for the tow acronym anyways so those are basically uh probably to outfit the 15 um bradleys that are going over because the bradleys fire toes I think they carry two on top at a time and uh, I can't remember how many inside but anyway so you're you're sending over these Bradleys I don't I don't imagine they're sitting in some motor pool somewhere with toes uh, ready to go I would assume that uh, they have to be cut they, they, they come in a separate uh, separate re requisition so uh, AT4 anti anti armor systems I think those are the uh, they, they are either sensor or remote activated uh, anti-tank uh anti-tank anti-armor systems that can be planted you know uh in trees and bushes and fields and around corners that sort of thing over 22 ma 22 million rounds of small arm ammunition and grenades uh demolition munitions for obstacle clearing i'm going to show you this afterwards because i think i know what this is uh tactical secure communication support equipment very likely that could be Starlink or it could be a completely separate system from Starlink to give them some sort of different capabilities or a backup to Starlink uh, and spare parts and other field equipment. So for the demo demolition uh, uh, munitions for obstacle clearing. So we know uh, we've already seen some, uh, I didn't know what Miklik stood, uh, stood for. Uh, the U.S. loves their acronyms. A lot of countries do, but uh, we've seen them in use already and they are great for clearing anti-tank mines um they actually can blow away dragon's teeth and anything else <laughs> in their path too um so what miklik stands for is mine clearing line charge totally makes sense uh so i wanted to play this video for you guys to see what the system looks like and you probably recognize it it's been used by the something similar has been used by the russians and this has been used by the ukrainians not just for mine clearing it's actually been launched into um uh, i can't remember what town it was it wasn't was it Kherson? i don't know but the uh i remember the ukrainians actually launched uh this into a an abandoned town where basically there was uh wagner forces i believe uh, that were in a couple of buildings and they basically launched this anti-mine clearing charge line charge into the town and it's quite astounding but anyways here we go sergeant madriz alfredo from Alpha troop regimental engineer squadron Cavalry regiment uh, this is mine clearing linear charge so you see the the initial um the charge is basically pulled up by a rocket and then following behind the rocket is the is the charge and then i i'm gonna guess that the last line is basically what they use to set it off once it's landed kind of like a communication line or basic i don't know i don't know enough about this and i haven't done enough of a deep dive into actually the three phases the three pieces of it but I know the first phase is the rocket that basically takes it down range and then what trails behind it and you've seen some of them in the back of a truck basically it looks like a not a wrapped up fire hose that's a lot smaller than that but kind of curled up like a fire hose and then it just basically hauls it all out and drops it down range and you think nothing's happened and it's like a little bit of a delay and then boom do a Anyways. mod four rocket what it does launches the rocket over the obstacle or minefield and clears a path 14 meters wide by 100 meters in depth to allow the 
infantry freedom of maneuver to their objective. Wow. Oh. oh. So 14 meters uh, wide, that's about 50 feet, I would say. Which is wider than I thought. There you go. Just thought you'd enjoy that little uh, bit of information on uh, how dragon's teeth, and you saw a bar bar there that reminded me this this system can clear anything that's on the on the surface or under the surface anti personnel anti tank um small uh, you know small barriers like those dragon's teeth the dragon's teeth are a joke to me um they're basically concrete pyramids they're made of uh, poor quality of concrete they are not uh affixed to the ground or each other um and you've seen You've seen uh, a BMP or a BTR, I can't remember who it was, a Ukrainian BTR, purposely run over one on the side of the road just for fun because it was there. Um, and we've seen a Challenger 2 tank with a, a plow in the front basically uh, just push them away like they weren't like they're lawn gnomes. So, anyways, um, so there you go. A little bit of a little bit of a rabbit hole, a little bit of information, but something that I find absolutely fascinating. Um, so it won't be a huge amount of clips tonight, but I just uh, cherry picked some uh, some interesting uh, videos and news items that I thought you would like to see. Uh, so starting off with Ukrainian special forces using a uh, first person view kamikaze drone on Russian positions. cannot remember what the music situation is but these are the wolves and I love the logo I love these guys okay so you see a nice squad of uh, Russians moving and they've left a house for a little side building yeah I think they're going into this little shed here and oh jesus why did that do that i did not turn the volume up um as always they've got an observation drone it's standing off quite a bit and then a second uh, second soldier is uh using a racing drone usually with a an rpg7 underneath slung underneath it and it's basically got a one trip a one-way ticket. <laughs> and look at that, it's going right for that exact same spot <laughs> that you just saw those guys in. Okay, got uh, eight, nine, ten guys, and then a couple of trailers. And they're all going into this uh, little two-car garage looking thing. And then so is the drone. Hey guys. No, it's a three car garage or none. Anyways, I do love those. Uh, I do love those racing drones. They're fantastic. They are harder to jam. Um, they are harder to operate. Uh, it's uh, it's. It's not as easy as just sitting there with a quadcopter, you know, and put it into hover mode and, and observe Russian troops. Uh, the people who fly these things, um, they have to practice. They have to prove that they can do it. And they're very difficult to um, apparently uh, learn. But once you do, uh, it, the expertise is invaluable and they can fly them. I've seen first, per first person view racing drones, these kamikaze drones. I've seen them bounce off of the top of a T-72 and not set off the charge, the RPG-7 or whatever it was underneath it, and swing around for another try. I've seen uh, someone park, uh, drop the drone 
inside the open hatch of a tank. Um, and I've seen them fly completely into garages and buildings and doorways and that sort of thing. Um, so it's pretty impressive. Uh, moving on up uh, counterclockwise, as always, a significant decrease in the water level of the Kokovka Reservoir is visible. So this is a bit of a time lapse. And the instant, uh, the thing that always strikes me uh, when I look at time lapses is um, the, sorry, I didn't want to do that yet. The uh, power plant, nuclear power plant over here um, is a strategic target. It's a tar it's just a target for the Ukrainians to take back. They want it back and they've tried to take it back. And um, this is a significant waterway and the, the Russians have been shelling across here uh, for the entire conflict. Um, the Ukrainians apparently back in uh, October, November, I think it was November maybe, um, attempted to, with special forces, come across the waterway. And they had, sounds like a, a couple hundred um, operators with, with boats, night vision, whatever, uh, and they were repelled, they cut their losses or left before they because they were they were seen and they got no firefight and all this sort of stuff so long story short what i'm thinking is this is this is turning if this is turning into a walkway instead of a reservoir and i'm not saying that anytime soon you're going to see special forces walking across here at the same time um i think that the russians um by accidentally or on purpose blowing the dam have, yes, caused some problems for an advance in the Hirson area, but at the same time, they've potentially opened up their back door to um, in uh, pick your poison however long it takes to, for things to kind of dry out, firm up, that sort of thing. But um, this waterway is basically turned into a small river instead of a massive reservoir. So. Just something to think about as to, and again, the Ukrainians are going to be looking at all opportunities to um, catch the Russians off guard. Um, so who knows? But here you go. Here's the time lapse. So look at that. So that's basically the reservoir is still full, thankfully, uh, because this is the cooling, sorry, reservoir, the cooling pond. The cooling pond is still full. This is what we need to stay full. Um, to basically uh, keep the uh, the reactors, even though they're in cool down, um, they're basically almost they're sh as shut down as you can get. They still require a significant amount of water to stay cool. Um, and now you're seeing all of these sort of all of the the basically floor of the uh, reservoir become exposed and. Uh, it's going to slowly start to turn into dry land and you're going to see the the river flowing through. It looks like that's a bit of a basin still, so the river is going to still flow through there. And as these ponds and everything dry out here, you literally may have the ability, you can see almost a natural river, even though this was all underwater. Um, you can kind of see how the flow is underwater, right? So there's your river. And then um, you tell me it wouldn't be easy if all of this dries out for the Ukrainians to get across there and be able to uh, attack uh, on foot in a couple of weeks. Who knows? Anyways, I don't want to get too far down that rabbit hole, but that's uh, something that uh, I've been thinking about with all of this water gone. Uh, next up, the Ukrainians flying... Uh, oh yeah, the, the the Flying Skull Group uses first-person uh, kamikaze drones to destroy a Russian uh, Buhanka vehicle. So it actually, uh, I think it takes out a BM BTR. I think it's, uh, if I remember correctly, a BTR. But then it also uh, takes out uh, the mystery machine, the Scooby-Doo mystery machine. There we go. Okay. Yes, it's two videos. Oh. There's no way that's going to be copyright. 
So again, look at him. He loops around, gets gets a better angle. Approaches from the weak side armor if that's what he wants. And that's unbuttoned, so the not that it matters with the the top armor on those things are so thin, but might have been abandoned. Uh, you never know. Now that it's warm route, uh, when you see a tank or a IFV, that sort of uh, an APC unbuttoned with the hatches open, it could be abandoned, or um, it could be the fact that they have no air conditioning in their in their crap vehicles, and they. Uh, are leaving the hatches open to stay cool, uh, which obviously decreases the protection. Uh, so here is where Scooby-Doo and the gang um, bite the dust. Not safe for work if you're a Scooby-Doo fan. Sorry, it's choppy. That's that's the video. It's not me. It's you, not me. That's what she said. All right. And yeah. And it just basically gets its bearings. And with a van like this. So see, this is a nice little Scooby-Doo van. Boom. And there it is. And that thing would stand no chance. He's good with flying skulls. Great logo. Okay. And uh, back to the map. Next up, uh, we have. No, oh, sorry. I still got my uh, Liberation Towns on there, so. Um, uh, drone one T eighty zero. That's all I'm going to say. I don't need to read the rest of this title. This is a great video. And again, this is one of the higher end tanks that the Russians are fielding. Boom. You see that hit in the engine bay and there was an instant flare up and smoke out of the barrel. So it tells me it ignited, but usually if one one shell cooks off, it's done. The carousel underneath goes right away. So maybe it was just a nice penetration from the uh, from the RPG seven. It's another watching it to see if it's going to cook off, or they need to hit it again. And now you've got the ammo cook off. I am surprised they didn't uh, blow when you get a turret toss. It was more of a jet flame. That's less than a $3,000 drone, probably a lot less than a $3,000 drone. Um, with a hundred dollar piece of ammunition hanging underneath it and it just took out a three million ish dollar tank i'd say that's a good return on investment <laughs> and this thing just cooks forever as the saying goes let it cook And there's the aftermath that finally completely burned down to the ground. Wow. Looks like it finally did toss the turret, I guess. Yeah. Finally, some shells went. There you go. Interesting clip. And good to see the Ukrainians punching above their weight again. Uh, Ukrainian shelling montage uh, and the last one I think this is it the last one is a uh, 
training slash base, uh, training area slash base for the Russians. The first one, hang on. You've seen the first one before. This is, uh, it's an, uh, the first clip is an older one. Uh, this is a, like a drainage culvert under this two lane highway. And the, the Russians had stuffed it full of ammunition, etc. And the Ukrainians found out about it. We never saw the hit, but we just see as it's cooking off. So, but uh, some of the other clips in this montage are new. This says Spartan News rocks. Make sure you subscribe. That's what that says right there. And that is one hell. Wow. It's a BM21 grad, I'm going to guess. No, I can't read Cyrillic. I just saw the 21 there. So it's the only thing I know of Russians that's... No, not going to guess what it, that says. And those are Excaliburs, for sure. It's an ammo dump. You got it. Uh, another BM-21 grad. Right there. That I can read. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Yeah, it didn't hit it, but I can, okay, so this is, um, this is a Russian, uh, training base, um, that's basically what they describe it as, and you'll, you'll see by the number of people running after this hit. Look at them all. Yeah, so when I look at this, um, these this berm over here, it kind of tells me it could be a firing range. Um, anyways, I'm not going to guess at everything that's here, but it definitely looks like, that to me almost looks like a Terminator. Uh, not quite sure what that is. Got one of those uh, post-World War II trucks right there. And yeah hard to tell what everything else is but definitely it's a it's a training base so i don't know if they hit a troop con concentrate it looks like they hit a troop concentration basically where everybody was coming from no other details on that uh a russian uh mtlb with a two B9 Vasilyak uh, mortar was damaged by Ukrainian uh, kamikaze drone. So this is good video. Gives you the, I like when they give you the full motion, full speed motion hit. And then afterwards they give you the, the, the aftermath. That's the difference between Ukrainian and Russian videos, as we all know. Uh, the Ukrainians, sometimes they'll show you even when they miss, and then they'll show you the hit, and then they'll show you the uh, aftermath, um, the battle damage assessment, whatever you want to call it, basically. They'll go back and they'll visit it either as it's cooking off or um, after the fact. They'll show you the wreckage or whatever, whereas the Russians, you'll see, like, it'll instantly cut off and then they'll pull away like when they've when they've hit like a paladin or something with a freaking lancet and they're like oh yeah the paladin was destroyed but they don't show you it right or they splice the videos together and anyway so watch this one no that's gonna get me copyrighted and even slow it down for you too which is good so i have not seen this particular vehicle set up before It's a, looks like a heavy mortar. No. Anyway, so they hit it with the FPV and then, uh, and then either it got abandoned after it was hit 
or was already abandoned. Yeah, it's I I don't know what's not a medium medium order, right? It's not a it's not a heavy, it's not a light. Um, in the back of a camouflage truck, so I guess this is a cope cage with camouflage put on the back of it. Anyway, so I've never seen that set up before, so I thought I thought you'd find that interesting. Uh, next up, I'll close that. Not a ton tonight. I didn't want to overdo it with. And some of the videos I found some I found some neat videos, but then they were they were poor quality. Like the there was a gimbal on the bottom of a uh, of a drone, and it was just so painful. And then I found some uh, uh, some Madhya birds uh, videos, like a montage. But some the person who uploaded it uploaded it five times speed, and so then I tried to low I lowered it down to half that. And the voices were all choppy and it was just going to be painful you guys to watch so uh but it's too bad too because it looked like it was a good montage and i watched it all twice to, to see if i could get it to, to be palatable for you guys but uh, it was just a pain but um ukrainian 59th brigade repelling a russian attack uh by shelling an incoming armored column after an impact the apc chooses to retreat while the tank keeps going so i think this is a loss of communication I'll show you why. Um, so, and again, you can love the tactic or not, but you're going to basically see a, a column of uh, several uh, armored vehicles led by a tank. Tanks doing the firing, taking, you know, like pull, pulling all the attention to itself. Everything looks good. And then you're going to see an artillery shell land and then panic sets in. People get out of a vehicle that's fully operational. Some of the vehicles turn around. I don't think anybody told the tank. And the tank keeps going while the the rest of the people, the rest of his support are leaving. And as you may or may not know, having a solo tank out there is is horrible. Um, having infantry out there without tank support is can be horrible as well. Um, when you have, uh, be, you know, call them IFVs, infantry fighting vehicles, or up armored battle taxis or whatever, uh, along with a tank all together, the three of them work in a symbiotic relationship. They all protect each other in different ways. When one of them is missing, uh, the, it's a gap that you don't want to encounter on the battlefield. And, um, and again, I have no problem with them leaving this tank out to dry, but just watch the video and see if you agree with me. All right. So this, uh, looks like a, a BTR, uh, potentially or a BMP. It's hard to tell cause the whole top is missing anyways, long destroyed. And there's clearly been, um, there's clearly been some battles going on here. Like it looks like you've got some damaged, some old destroyed equipment and hundreds and hundreds of uh, artillery shots. Anyway, so here's your tank. Here's your troop carriers in the back. Tanks firing. Life is good. That artillery shell was nowhere close, but there's your ranging shot, right? That one, there's a ranging. And this one, not a direct hit, but close. Now watch what happens. So the tank stops, evacuates the gas out of the barrel long after that shot which is crazy um and this uh call it a btr no B bmp i think it's a bmp i always screw the two up but anyways so it was hit sorry it wasn't hit it wasn't hit but the hit was close to it enough to maybe give some people some nerves or whatever but at the same time it's clearly mobile doesn't look to be having any damage stops no visible smoke coming off of it. The smoke from the 155 round is is dissipating. Tank fires off its next shot. This guy says, "Yeah, I'm not feeling this. I'm not feeling this battle. They're zoned in on us. I think I'm going to start to turn around. I don't want to drive out in the field to turn around too far because I know I'm a semi-smart driver, and I know it's probably mine." So I'm going to try to stay as close to the to beaten path as possible and get this sucker turned around. Now watch what happens. These guys have all left this vehicle. 
and basically said, yeah, we're going to go to the back one. Hey, can you give us a ride? We don't want to hang with our guys. Oh, wait. Trying to come lately. Now the tank says, I don't know what's going on back here. I assume I've still got support. I'm going to start going off the beaten path across this field. Hopefully there's no mines. And I'm sure my infantry has got my back. So the vehicle that these guys abandoned is still mobile and still trying to support the tank. Now with a lot fewer bodies on it, if any. And then to me, the first time I watched this, this looks like the tank bottoms out. Like it really, you can't see any, any of the, uh, like uh, the sides of the tracks or anything. So I wasn't sure if it got stuck or not, but. All right. Now these guys, I think have been told there's no room at the end. <laughs> so, or your vehicle's not damaged. Dummies go back to it. Uh, this guy's just loaded up. And I mean, it's a hot mess. So three or four guys ran off on their own. For some reason, they're not on that vehicle. They're not in their operating vehicle. So they ran. This guy's loaded up. He's got himself, I think, completely turned around now where he's going to leave. The tank is almost bottomed out. This guy's decided, no, I'm going to go back the way I was before. I've decided I like you guys better. And so now you've got a tank all by itself firing. Artillery zoned in this area. And all of the infantry, infantry support that was supposed to support this tank once he gets into it with ATGMs and other dismounted troops and, you know, Ukrainian troops or whatever... They're all gone, and I don't know if he knows because he's just plowing along. And so again, this vehicle's now stopped. This guy's changed his mind yet again. And he's going to run back to the tank. Then the artillery shell goes off. He says, no, one more time. I'm going to go back <laughs> the way I came. And the tank is getting further and further away from his support. This guy's doing a three point turn. Now the tank is completely on uh, an unbeaten path and I would have expected it to hit a mine at that point. But anyways, just, you know, uh, like the Russians get so close to doing things right. And then, and, and they snatch, what is it? They snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. <laughs> I think that's the that's the right way to say it. Uh, okay. I think this is the last one from around the map. Uh, three trenches cleared by soldiers of the third separate assault brigade. This is pretty intense. And no one. Um, this is safe for work, I believe. There is nothing inappropriate, YouTube. This is. Just a good combat analysis video. These guys just basically had a little break and they say, they're like, okay, let's go get these trenches. Suppressing fire in the trench as they approach. And there's going to be a couple of times where you're going to see the complete trust and comfort level that these guys have. I notice um, there's certain times where they're throwing a grenade and the one, one guy will just know the other guy's throwing the grenade. There's not much said. And he just looks for the body motion or he expects the guy to throw the grenade, doesn't say much. And then they both duck down together. And then there's other times where they've kind of got a crossfire going where one guy's firing and the other guy's going like literally underneath his line of fire. And there's complete trust and understanding and comfort level with each other. Um, no one's going to teach you to do that. Uh, fire six inches over your mate's head or whatever. But at the same time, it's going to happen in battle. And to see to see how these guys kind of work in a, in a bit of a dance together, if you want to call it that. Um, you can tell 
they've been they've been fighting with each other for a while. They're well trained, and they're they understand where they they understand um, how to interact with each other uh, safely and effectively. And by the way, just aim for the trash heap. Like this is disgusting. These Russians have been here for weeks. You could literally you could literally tell how many Russians are in a trench by how much trash there's I'm gonna say this is two guys. One guy sat there, one guy sat there and throwing his crap there, and this guy threw his crap there. But anyways. I think this is the grenade toss where look basically throws it. Not much is said. They both duck. It's not like, oh my god, grenade. It's just like, yeah. Another one. Now, I think coming up here, you're going to see him firing over his mate's head. So he points off into this. Let's go get that trench. <laughs> These guys are badass. And they give this one a little one two on the way by, like. We've got better things to do. We want to make sure nobody pops up while we're going by. And then here's the doozy. This one's tons of... Oh my God, it's disgusting. But tires everywhere. And uh, multiple ways that you could be surprised by somebody popping up from a tire that moves as a doorway. Or like this one's... see right there so looks like there's a manhole there to go down and then this cover here it almost looks like it's a roof and there's a there's a you know there's a room underneath here it's really hard to tell but I think so and so does he because that's why he's firing into it and then they seem to, they just threw a grenade and they seem to think that there's an exit, um, you know, camouflaged by tires here because they've fired into this area a few times. And you can't see any ground directly down there. Did I just see somebody move there? I've watched this twice, but watch right here. No. Right in there. I think that's where they're aiming. Oh, what was that? That's the first time I saw that. Is this a helmet? Watch right here. Something rolled down. There you go. Um, and uh, you just kind of admire the, the professionalism, the effectiveness uh, of their movement and cover and communication and the, 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 the bravery because you approach this there could be a guy in any one of these tires they could be a it could be a stack of tires and they're sitting inside of it there could be multiple entrances there could be booby traps whatever um and and these guys just basically they know it's got to be done very impressive anyways that i think yeah that's it for the map um i'm very bad sometimes i miss some of my little icons that i put there and then i i see it after i've uh, recorded stream and I'm like ah, that would have been a good one to it I missed it and now it's like a day late the dollar short um, this one's from a mystery place uh, Russian T72 goes off the path so this <laughs> I don't know what to say if you're driving down the road in foreign land and you've invaded them illegally and you're in your tank and you know the road's safe why would you get off the road I don't know And it's like, if you had to go to the bathroom, stay on the road. Anyways, let's see if, see what we got for the music situation here. Um, and again, the Ukrainians are renowned for this, right? So they will, um, you know, like they'll say, okay, uh, the road widens out here or the road narrows here or... Um, it's just past the trees, so this is most likely going to be the first place that a tank is going to pull off. Because a tank is not going to pull off in this thick stand of trees, right? 
So if I'm if I'm trying to uh, you know mine an area and try to catch you or whatever, I'm thinking okay, I might put some if they were legal some anti personnel mines in here, for example. And then um, if I'm thinking a vehicle is going to pull off for cover, for rest, for whatever, uh, I'm going to start thinking that they're going to get past the stand of trees and they're going to pull off here. So I'm going to mine this whole area. Oop. Sorry. There we go. T-72. And tank mine. Tank mine. Three, two, one. Left, right. <laughs> I can safely say that's detract on both sides. And well done by whoever placed those. So it's a four man or three man crew. And to get out. Looks like the driver decided to stay with the vehicle. I don't know. Uh, second last thing we have for you tonight is a speech from President Zelensky. The man. Серед них одна дитина. Мої співчуття рідним та близьким. Всього більше 30 людей травмовано. Усім їм надається необхідна допомога. Я хочу подякувати кожному і кожній. And there are no Russian or sorry Ukrainian military assets. There are no legitimate targets in Krivyri. Uh, and I didn't put the video in because I don't want to put his face on too much, but. Putin met, met with the mill bloggers and stuff today and was sitting there sipping champagne saying, oh, I would never target civilian targets. Why, 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 why would I ever do that? Свідомий російський удар по звичайному місту лише вкотре доводить просту істину. Ми маємо разом з партнерами забезпечити фізично такі умови, щоб російський терор став неможливим. Перше, це наш повітряний щит. Достатньо систем ППО достатньої потужності. Плюс сучасні винищувачі. Modern fighter jets are on the way, F-16s and probably F-18s too. По наших містах і селах тільки тоді держава терорист зрозуміє, що у миру для всіх українців і у програшу для Росії немає альтернатив. Друге це знищення основи Destruction для терору для виробництва державою терористом нових ракет. На жаль, Росія досі має можливість отримувати критичні компоненти для виробництва ракет, які створені. Компаніями з різних країн світу, в тому числі компаніями з деяких країн партнерів. Різними шляхами ці компоненти потім поставляють в Росію. Якщо взяти до прикладу одну з ракет, які вдарили сьогодні по кривому рогу, то близько 50 компонентів 50 components of it, mostly microelectronics microelectronics were produced in other countries. В інших країнах. І сьогодні відбулася did you know that the shipments of um, wash machines to Azerbaijan has increased by over a thousand percent since the war started? Do you think they're doing that much more laundry in Azerbaijan? Or do you think that they're taking the, like, the computer chips out of the wash machines after they travel through Azerbaijan and into Russia? That's how they do it. That's just one small way. Із дипломатами відповідних країн список компаній, які постачають Росії компоненти для вбивств, у всіх партнерів є. Є цей список. Розуміння, як російські терористи намагаються обманути світ, теж у всіх. 
And don't tell me that somebody at Whirlpool or Meyer or any of the other companies that produce these components don't know for a fact that all of a sudden they're shipping 10 times, 100 times what they used to ship to some of these second and third world, world countries. Don't tell me they don't know what's going on. They, they turn a blind eye to it. We don't have to restrict sales to Azerbaijan or Turkmenistan or wherever the hell it is. So we're just going to keep on shipping Whirlpool washers to that particular country until someone tells us not to. La la la. Cover your eyes, cover your ears. Export controls. So basically, if you ship a thousand um, uh, wash machines to, again, I'll say Azerbaijan or Tajikistan, whatever, you shipped a thousand last year. Year over year, the growth of wash machine imports by that particular country has never been more than 3%. So if you shipped a thousand to them last year, you can only ship a thousand and thirty this year maximum. You can't ship ten thousand to them this year. Разом з Росією, щоб терористи могли і надалі підривати житлові будинки та вбивати людей, то такі суб'єкти, бізнес чи держава заслуговують відповідної реакції світу, жорсткої реакції. Вся інформація щодо цього є у партнерів. Це однозначно дешевше один раз і назавжди перекрити для терористів шляхи постачання компонентів для ТРО, ніж постійно витрачати нові й нові протиракети для ППО. Сьогодні ж відбулася і нарада щодо підготовки неминучої законної і справедливої відповідальності Росії за цю агресію. Ми опрацьовуємо кілька сценаріїв створення спеціального трибуналу щодо злочину агресії. Злочину за який повинно відповідати вище російське керівництво. Злочину, який породив всі інші злочини цієї війни. І така відповідальність обов'язково буде. Дійсно, це непросте завдання, але українці виконали вже стільки непростих завдань, що це не лише точно виконують, а виконують із задоволенням. Трибунал буде. Зустрівся сьогодні з генеральним директором МАГАТЕ в Гросі. Дуже активно працюємо над тим, щоб не допустити будь-яких інцидентів на окупованій росіянами Запорізькій атомної станції. Поки там окупанти, ризик є для усього світу, і це очевидно. Лише повна деокупація станції та її повернення під український контроль здатні гарантувати безпеку. І ми зробимо все для цього. Добре, що МАГАТЕ пропонує відправити до нас в Україну Групу експертів, які оцінять наслідки знищення Росією, Дамби та інших споруд Каховської ГЕС. Світ повинен знати в усіх деталях, що відбувається та який злочин проти природи, природи та людей скоїла Росія. Я сподіваюся, експерти МАГАТЕ запрацюють вже найближчим часом. І обов'язково наші воїни, наші герої. Я дякую вам усім, хто зараз в бою хто захищає і просуває вперед наші позиції. Приміром, Бахмутський напрямок, а це, зокрема, воїни 80-ї окремої бригади ДШВ, на різних ділянках є рух вперед. Я дякую вам. Дякую за надзвичайну хоробрість. Підрозділи ОСУ в Таврі в умовах надзвичайно жорстоких боїв, в умовах авіаційної та артилерійської переваги окупанта є рух вперед. Дякую вам, воїни. Дякую за кожен крок і за кожен метр української землі, яка звільняється від російського зла. Морпіхи 35 та 36 окремих бригад, 110 окрема механізована бригада, 
I like when he calls out individual units. Every night, every single night, except for maybe four, I think it's about 471 speeches. And sometimes I'd like to finish off on something nice. I might, I might try to finish off on a happier note, but I also want to recognize people that have fallen or whatever. This one just struck me. Um, in the uh, brutal, vicious uh, military on civilian attack on Kriviri on June 13th, Ukrainian civilians, uh, David and Ksenia Eppelman were both killed by a Russian missile strike on their apartment block in the city of Kriviri. They were married only last year. Both were 22 years old. 22 years old. Vladimir Putin had to target them. Why? Because he wants to keep Ukrainian air defense systems locked in the center of the country so, it'll st so they'll stay away from the front lines. Or because he thinks he can terrorize the Ukrainian population and get them to quit. And every time he does this, he only makes them more resolute, the Ukrainian population more resolute in the belief that Russians have to be evicted from every single centimeter, every single inch of Ukrainian land, including Crimea. And they're going to lose uh, any control over the Black Sea and they're going to lose any standing in the world. And this is incident number 9,050 of brutal war crimes against the civilian population of the, Ukraine, the Ukrainian people. If there's a one-on-one -on -one battle on the battlefield, the Ukrainians win every single time. If there's a three-on-one -on Russia on Ukraine, the Ukrainians still probably win. This is all he has. This is all Putin has. Threaten nukes and attack civilians and pray that the support runs out. And it's not going to run out. Um, the, it, we're, we're all in. Everybody's all in. Anyways, if you've uh, watched this far, I really appreciate it. Uh, I'd welcome any comments. Um, please subscribe please like, please share with somebody, um, pass on any comments and requests for co content coverage, that sort of thing. I'm all ears. Have a great night and we'll talk soon. Goodbye.